Welcome back to the Chess Skills YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to go over the art of chart reading. This is how I like to analyze games. Use a combination of the review tool on chess.com and the analysis tab. So let's jump right into it. What I did was I took the last three games that I played, one loss, one draw, and one win. And I'm just going to talk through it live. I haven't analyzed these games yet. What I wanted to do is kind of just walk you through how I analyze a game using the chart. So these are all blitz games and I want to analyze them fairly quickly, maybe five minutes each at the most. It'll take a little longer just because I'm explaining. So in this game, I'm playing the black pieces. And if we look at the chart in the beginning, we see this spike up for white and it's kind of this general trend upwards and it gets to a very high point. Like this orange dot up here is 3.7 for white. So I want to figure out what went wrong in this opening. So for me in this game, I'm focused on the opening. We had a Karo Khan, C5, with a strange move C4 for white. So in the game, I played pawn to D4. This was a mistake already. And if I retry this move after C4, I think D takes C is the way to go. Because what happens is black gets that backwards D pawn. And it does say D takes C4 is best. So oftentimes what I'll do is I'll kind of toggle back to this analysis board and I'll put the evaluation and the lines on and go a little deeper. So let's say bishop takes c4. I can play knight c6, pawn to e6, play knight f3, e6, castle. Peter likes this idea of knight h6, kind of eyeing these light squares, blocking the f5 push. And I'll just go ahead a little bit, get an idea. Well, how could I have developed these pieces? What are some natural squares? And I plug in moves that I think white might play. And now I see a6, b5 as an idea, kingside castle. Okay, I feel good with that. Now let's go back to the review tab. So I messed up there in the opening. And then somewhere around here, 1.36 advantage. I castled and played f5, and the computer didn't like this sequence. f5 for sure was a mistake. Okay, so what I would do here is think about this position. B4 was just played by white in accuracy. I'm playing F5. F5 is a move where I'm feeling a little uncomfortable, and I just played something to play dynamic. And oftentimes these moves can create bigger problems when you're on the defensive side. What I need to do here is find a solid move. Obviously F5 is bad. What would be a better way to play this position? It's actually kind of difficult to find a good move here. I'm wondering if I should just play solid and maybe play like rook a to d8, for example. Not do anything too crazy. Because after f5, e takes f, bishop takes f, what happens is this pawn pushes up, opening up the bishop, knight's ready to come into g5. e6 pawn becomes weak. There's too many downsides to that move. I'm also looking at C takes and A takes. That seems pretty good for white. Okay, let's try which rook do I want to move? Rook A to D8. Retry this. This is the one I want to retry. Okay, Rook A to D8. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to challenge myself the first time to find the correct move. I don't immediately look at the answer. It's taking some time. Let's just jump to analysis. Rook a to d8 was not correct. Knight to b8 stands out. Wow, a prophylactic move. Okay, so if white plays a move like queen to e2, this knight now heads to d7. All right, so let me just say rook to d1 for white. What are, what's the idea here? b takes b, a takes b, knight to c6. A6, rook f to d8. I like rook f to d8. But it looks like this is kind of the idea. We bring that knight back, make the trade, and the imbalances come with this kind of uh, interesting pawn structure where it's like this pawn hanging out on d4, but there's potential targets for white. We have a5 coming, trying to lock up that pawn. And right now, those bishops aren't doing a lot for white because they're running into these white pawns. And the double pawn for white might not matter in the long term. So that's a good thing to learn from. 
and I definitely misplayed that. All right, so then here my opponent made a big mistake. Rook to a2. I was able to win the exchange and get this winning endgame. Right here, I botched it. Rook to a8. 38 seconds, I just straight up blundered the rook. Um, so that's one I don't think I need to really focus too much on. I'm not going to do that every game. And that's just a blitz tactic that um, I think playing more blitz should clear up. All right, game number two. I'm playing the white pieces. Pretty wild chart. So this was a King's Indian defense. I had a 0.98 advantage right here. So this is the first point I would look at. I was able to build up to this 0.98 in the chart, but then it dropped. On to g5, the eval drop. So what should I play here instead of on to g5? I need to figure something else out. If I play pawn to h4, the g pawn drops. Bishop to e2 might be a good move, playing a defender on this pawn. Rook to c1 also looks pretty good. I think the idea is I just don't want to play g5 because it's a bit premature. Black's going to move the knight and quickly push their f-pawn up. I should prepare that a bit. Pawn to f3 is even interesting. Extra defender on this pawn and then go h4, h5. I actually kind of like pawn to f3 with the idea of h4. Yeah, f3 is best. Cool. So I lost a big portion of my advantage there. And then here I played g takes f. So this is one where my instinct is always to play g takes f when they play f5. But there is something better here. I'm wondering... Oh, I'm wondering if I should take this knight on c5. Trying to target this e pawn and create a pass pawn for myself on d5. Let's take a look at this. I think this is the way to go. Let's toggle. Oh, it's an inaccuracy. Doesn't hurt, but doesn't help. So let's look at the analysis. Turn on the eval, turn on the lines. E takes f is strongest. G takes f, and then bishop takes c5. Followed by d6. Wow, look at that. So that bishop is coming in with check. I got the knight over here ready to attack. I just did a video earlier today, recorded today, attacking the Fiend Kiddo structure in the kid, and this is exactly what I would recommend in that video. Bring in more attackers, push that pawn up to open up this attack for the bishop, try to remove defenders for black, like knight to h5 removes that. Castle queen side. Bring both rooks over to attack the king. Very nice. What was wrong with my bishop takes right away? Well, it looks like it was okay, um, but there's this in-between move f4 that black could play. All right, back to the chart. So right here, queen f6 was a blunder. Oh, my queenside castle was a blunder too. Wow, there's a lot of blunders in this game. Queenside castle. What should I have played instead? This is the piece that can attack currently. Bishop on f1. I'm thinking bishop to h3. I want to trade off these bishops, expose the light squares. I think I have my depth set pretty high. There's only one good line. Go to the analysis. Bishop takes c5 again. All right, so this was a key idea that I kept missing. I'm guessing that's also what happened on the next move. Yep, bishop takes c5. So sometimes that happens where you have a blind spot and just over and over you keep missing it. So that's definitely a big takeaway from this game. I was able to come back, but I created this bad position for myself. And then here I made a tactical error. Knight to b5.
What should I have played? We rook to g1. Rook to g1 is best. Okay. I had to play more active here. Rook to g1. Knight to b5. Was trying to create a threat, but it leaves this pawn to be captured real easily. It's a pretty sloppy game, but I think there were some really good takeaways here that I can use the chart to highlight. This one, g5. This one I should have played e takes f. And then looking for this idea, bishop takes c5 and d6. So three really good takeaways here. And this is why playing blitz is important, because if my instinct is missing some of these things, my intuition is missing these things, that might carry over to classical games too. So you want to keep building these ideas in your head. Blitz can help you do that. All right, one more game. I'm playing the white pieces. Well, this is kind of like a King's Indian slash Benoni structure. Knight f3 here lost me some of my advantage. I want to look at that. I do focus quite a bit on the openings from Blitz. Toggle on the lines. C takes b5 is strongest. I do like C takes b5. And if Black tries to go for a Benko setup, you can actually play a4 here. And taking here is good for white. Because now that bishop is firmly cemented there. Um, I'm just going to play knight f3. Castle. This is a great position for white. Extra pawn. Not a lot of uh, counterplay for black. And I'm a Benko player. I usually like these positions for black. But this is not a good one. But black was just completely outplaying me. Look at this game. Yeah, this is a mistake that I've made quite a bit too. I'll play h3 in these kind of Benko Benoni positions, just allowing bishop takes f3. Bishop to e3 is stronger, but still I'm down half a pawn, so I want to avoid that. I don't even want to be down half a pawn to begin with. Now some tactical problems are coming up. Right here, queen e7. 28 seconds. All right, I'm not going to focus too much on these. So in a blitz game, sometimes I'll just look at the main takeaways or the opening. There was a nice one there, knowing to play C takes B5. I'm good with that. And I think that's kind of what I would do for those three games. This video was 12 minutes in practice. That would probably only take me about two minutes per game to analyze. The games take six minutes. I feel that's a pretty good balance, and that's how you can start to build your takeaways from Blitz games. So we're calling this video The Art of Chart Reading. It's using these charts, these nice chess.com charts, to figure out where does the slope change, where are the spikes, and it's a very personalized process. So I'm not going through every single mark that the coach gives me and clicking show line and retry and all those things. I think that's for rapid games, that's for classical games, slower games. For Blitz games, I really want to just hone in on a couple main takeaways. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.